What's up guys, welcome back, circle back to another video. We are back with the Audi R8. Now the only thing in this video that's getting installed on the Audi R8 is this sick new navigation system, but that's not the only thing that's gonna be done in this video, so stay tuned. The first thing I wanna go ahead and do is install this beautiful radio we ended up picking up. I'm gonna have the company's name linked down below. I was super excited to actually see a company that actually makes a navigation system that when you put it into the car, looks better than OEM. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a stock radio on an R8, but it looks absolutely terrible. It literally looks like you bought Bought something from Walmart and just slapped it inside of your car. It looks like your typical double din radio. And this thing, look at the fit and finish. It's a bigger screen. It looks factory. And on top of that, you have the beautiful R8 logo that's going to light up while this car literally just has your standard button. See, so yeah, for an aftermarket unit, it beats the OEM, not just functionality wise, but also aesthetically, which I'm super stoked for. And did I mention that Apple CarPlay? That's the main reason we're actually doing it. It has Apple CarPlay. Again, super stoked for this. Now we do have a bunch of wiring over here and we're pretty much going to be using pretty much all of this because we also have a backup camera and I want to get that installed as well. Now, I'm not going to lie, this does look overwhelming. So I'm just going to go ahead and just try to play with it, try to get everything in there and just test everything. And once everything actually works, I'll kind of show you guys what I did exactly. First things first, actually removing the stock radio and it actually comes with the proper tools to actually remove the stock radio. I thought it didn't. So I bought these. Um, Audi actually sells them for dirt cheap. So it doesn't matter if you don't have the tool, head down to your local Audi dealership. They got the tool easy to install, but I'm happy that I actually came with it. And these are much longer so I'm actually going to go ahead and use these bad boys to get off the stock radio. So now that we got the radio uninstalled from the car, we got it sitting on the bench right over here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not looking too bad, but what I'm super happy about is how girthy this thing is, which means that all these wires are gonna tuck in so nicely because this thing is a fraction of the size. We'll have so much space to actually have all these wires connected. And uh, long story short, I think this gonna be pretty easy to install. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start connecting as many wires to this unit as possible before we're actually putting it inside the car. All right, guys, so we went ahead and connected this bad boy. So this is gonna go to one of the outlets that we disconnected the stock radio from. Uh, these are two USBs that plug in right here. They only plug in one way. Um, there's another cable that plugs in right over here, which is the backup camera. So we got that hooked up. And then we also have all of this stuff just connects to each other. So we have the box connects to itself. Uh, this connects to this side. Again, everything that's connected over here, it only goes in one way. Can't really mess that up. Now, in terms of getting things wired down, I found the easiest way to just take out that screw right there. I write it down the two USBs right over here. The antenna cable, I just write it right up there, stick it right there, makes life super easy. And then last but not least, I actually routed and just tucked away the rear backup camera all, all along the center console, pokes out right over here, and then pretty much just connected it right here so you actually connect it to the wire you don't actually connect it to the module so you just connect it like that and now we can go ahead and reassemble this entire rear section this rear section when you have a cd player it comes up all together so it's one piece you just pull up no tools needed you just pretty much pull up on it comes right on out so yeah pretty easy thing to uninstall and now without further ado i'm just going to go ahead and honestly push everything back together put some power to the car and see if this bad boy works This is actually day two guys of working on the radio. I ended up popping the radio back out again because I was getting some staticky sounds. I didn't really understand what that was exactly. So unlike other units, I normally don't use these adapter pieces right over here. And I normally don't use this kind of cable mainly because I'm used to working on BMWs, but this ain't a BMW. We do need to end up using this stuff. This one actually connects to the GPS cable in the back of the unit. Um, and then this one actually connects to the blue cable that came out of the factory um, unit as well. So yeah, this wire is definitely needed. Uh, so we are gonna be hooking that up and then this guy right here i'll show you guys what this connects to so i had my cables these red ones as you guys can see red to red red to red and uh, this actually caused a lot of staticky sound um so that's the way to fix that is by literally just using this adapter so i have the two whites um that go to the out wire so there's an out and then there's also an in we're going to use the out cable right here and connect it to this adapter and we're going to do the exact same thing with the red and hopefully that should fix our static sound so after a little bit of messing around with this thing guys i figured out that this splitter um, basically the pins on the top are kind of loose. So I kind of just press on the pins. If I want to just disconnect this real quick, you guys can see that there's like four pins, like guide rails. 
just push those inwards a little bit so it makes better contact with this. And then bada me wada bang, I noticed that the static went away. So super happy about that. So anywho, now I'm gonna go ahead and just tape this all up with electrical tape. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. So now that these are pretty much dialed in, we are ready to go on that. The next thing is, is gonna be the backup camera. Because this is a manual, it's not just direct plug and play. I assume that you can just plug it in, it's gonna work like A-OK. -okay. But unfortunately, if you have a manual transmission, you do have to do one more wire. And that's why I have my entire wiring kit here with me. And guys, after hours of trying to figure out how to get the reverse to work like OEM, I finally figured it out guys super happy works like OEM it's actually way better too I like how it's full screen and it's such a big screen I absolutely love that so now that that's finally working let me explain to you guys how I got that to work because if you have a manual like me you do have to do one more wire if you have an automatic you just plug in that one cable that goes right behind the driver's seat but if you do have a manual you do have to do a wire from the back there's a it's literally a, a wire labeled behind this unit called reverse I'll throw up a picture right over here you solder a wire to that and then you pretty much tap it into uh, the, the red wire on this one. I'll go ahead and throw up a picture right now as well on which wire you need to tap into. This video is literally going to be for those of you guys who want to get this uh, navigation system for your car. So I'm going to try to make it as detailed as possible. So yeah, I finally tapped that in. Thank the Lord. Now we finally have a OEM functioning backup camera, Apple CarPlay, no more buzzing. Super happy with that. Honestly, really, really, really happy with the quality of the product. I'm really just not happy with how much info there is on our rates and even, and even this radio in particular. I mean, there's literally no information on our rates out there and that's why I'm kind of making this more of a DIY video rather than like a you know a vlog style video because I know a lot of people that are gonna have an R8 one day and these are becoming I guess more attainable they are kind of you know pretty attainable people are gonna want Apple CarPlay to update the technology in this car and there's no one else out there that has a video on a gen 2 version of this radio so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and just start buttoning up everything over here and start driving home tomorrow I'm actually gonna get back to the shop and we're actually gonna start working on dismantling some of those other cars um so yeah long story short very very happy with this radio looks super good apple carplay is absolutely amazing but i'll see you guys tomorrow and guys this is the next day check it out we got the radio installed everything on this bad boy is working absolutely perfect i'm having no issues whatsoever and of course we put it in reverse the backup camera turns on and it just looks super nice so yeah honestly guys i'm very 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 happy with this interior this beautiful steering from Azza, this beautiful infotainment system i believe the name is a car navi that's the name that's the name so shout out to them i believe they're they're not based in the united states they're based somewhere else um but again huge special shout out to them i love this infotainment system is absolutely amazing it definitely helps modernize this interior i wasn't a huge fan on how the original infotainment system looked mainly because it looked like it had an aftermarket infotainment system to begin with this looks more oem you guys can tell it doesn't look like there was an actual screen put into this it literally looks factory it has this beautiful r8 badge right there as well again the oem one had like a double din radio slapped into the car and yes it said audi on it but other than that it literally looked aftermarket in an oem car this just looks so much more oem it is so sick i absolutely love it i don't even want to peel this up just yet because it just looks so good and not to mention with the steering wheel right here and the gated manual just the car just feels like an absolute freaking dream i love this thing so something else i actually got done as well just now guys is the car paint check out the paint guys <laughs> Oh my lord. So I just had my boy Jose come over and do a full paint correction, polish, and everything. I had him do it in the garage because I really didn't want to take out the R8. Plus, I actually had to get some work done. So he actually came by my place. Shout out to him. He even actually washed the M3 for me as well. Did a full detail on this on the exterior. But yes, on this car, he's ceramic coating on the wheels. Three years of ceramic coating. Did tire polish on there. It just looks so, so, so good. You guys can check out the paint as well. Paint correction, polish, ceramic coating. So the car is a officially just looking absolutely gorgeous and i'm just i guys just check this out it just looks so gorgeous i'm happy to say that my dream car has not disappointed me so far the only imperfection this car has right now with the exterior is going to be this carbon side blade this is a clear coat issue um that was that was already there and if you try to fix it it's just going to get even worse so i told him just to leave that for now and eventually we end up swapping out that carbon side blade or just having somebody redo that carbon thing but other than that like oh my god guys it just looks so good god bless but yeah he also ended up cleaning this for me this is a complete surprise i did not know he's actually going to clean this up you guys can check it out with the wheels all cleaned up the rear wheels look so good with the michelin tires <laughs> 
Yeah, it has some curb rash on there, but it still looks so good. And not to mention, guys, this thing was absolutely filthy. So I'm super happy that the car is finally cleaned up. Now, now we're just waiting on the state referee appointment. So this car will officially be 100% legal. In terms of this car, we did get temporary plates, but it's not 100% legal just yet. Now, like I said, this video is not going to just be an install video. It's going to also show a couple of things that we did to not only the R8, but also the M3. And uh, long story short, we took the M3 to the bar, the state referee, which basically where they decide whether this car is street legal or not. So long story short, I was very, very, very stressed out for this appointment. I had it booked like six months in advance. The day finally came. If you miss this appointment, I think it's like a three month penalty. So literally it's like a year's process if you miss the date. But long story short, I didn't miss it. I showed up, showed up with the M3. I was gonna show you guys the video clips of what exactly happened. guys i'm not even nervous um that car we we built it to the t like literally everything that's from an m3 is on that car so unless an m3 won't pass mod this thing should 100 percent pass mods i'm over here sitting at a state ref like thinking no way but yes as you guys can see i'm super happy super grateful the e91 m3 did pass the state bar so the car is a legal e91 m3 on the road i basically have a state i believe it's like some kind of like bar sticker state bar sticker referee sticker whatever that allows me to smog this car anywhere legally this car is a hundred percent a legal e91 m3 and i just think that's the coolest thing ever um so yeah that's also what i've been working on behind the scenes and i'm just so happy that it's finally complete the m3 finally has plates Tags is registered um so super happy about that so, which means also more mods to come on that car hopefully in the near future because it's, it's finally time to start upgrading this bad boy but yeah once the car became finally legal i finally took it on its first car meet The car meet was an absolute blast. The first car meet I've honestly been to probably over a year. Um, I honestly just hadn't really had time to attend really any meets. I'm super happy that I was at least able to attend this one locally. Um, and then after that, honestly, I also want to get some more stuff done um, in terms of the cars, getting them registered and all that good stuff. We got the R8 registered. Um, I did also that behind the scenes. And then honestly, yeah, I ended up getting the R rate maintained at the dealer. I really wanted them to do a proper oil change on it. It's a, it's kind of a lengthy process because of the dry sum system on Audi R8. And I really didn't want to mess up on the oil change. So uh, long story short, I took it to them and they did the oil change for us. But the cool thing is, of course, is that the fact that we got the Audi R8 maintained at the dealer, we have proper paperwork. That's always good to have. So yeah, that's been pretty much all the updates have been going on this week. It's been a lot of stuff, but finally, I'm happy to say that E91 M3 and the Audi R8 are officially registered and legal here in California, um, which is kind of a flex to say because legal cars in California, it's kind of hard. But uh, anyways, without further ado, guys, it's going to have to conclude the video. So I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.